a simple motto and it's no mean girl shit. We just will not tolerate it. So basically they're kind of like light runs for beginners who kind of want to take their Jeep on like a nice terrain trail, some water, some mud, some just to get like the basics and like educate, like kind of like wheel wheeling 101. This is also an opportunity for the girls to get out and do something that they love without interruption, without mm-hmm. kids calling their name. It just shows that you know, as women, we are very empowering and very supportive. And not only when, you know, we have our group chats or we have our conversations in person, but we focus on Jeeps. We talk about real real shit. We talk about life struggles. We talk about work. We talk about families. We talk about whatever, you know, anybody else needs support with. Are you into four-wheeling, camping, and exploring? How about off-road racing like mud bogs, short course, wheel-to-wheel racing, or even desert races? Well, you've come to the right place. Welcome to 4 Before Canada podcast. My name is Wes, and I've been four-wheeling since I was six weeks old. I have over 20 years experience in 4 Before shops, many more than that in the off-road racing, and a lifetime of exploring the backcountry across Canada. Every week we bring you a new guest where they give you their perspective on the industry. We discuss everything from four-wheeling, overlanding, every form of off-road racing across this great country, as well as we talk to many Canadian manufacturers and 4 before shops. Just a quick reminder that if you're looking for more episodes, you can find all of our episodes on 4 Podcast.com or your favorite podcast sharing platform you can find us on facebook instagram and youtube at four before canada podcast.com now let's get to the show our guests today belong to a ladies only jeep club their private facebook group and meetups provide women a safe and non-judgmental place to engage with other like-minded women and they're not just pavement princesses these ladies like to get their jeeps dirty as well <laughs> nikki and trisha welcome to the four before canada podcast thank you for having Thanks. us so before we get into deep here, I would just like to ask the listeners for a favor. If you enjoy the Four Before Canada podcast and get value from it, please share it with your friends or someone you think will enjoy it. Having said that, let's get on to the show. So both of you are members of the GTA Jeep Girls Club, which is a female-only Jeep-based club in the general Toronto area. And I came across the club on Instagram, where your handle is simply enough, GTA Jeep Girls. One of the popular comments that I do get on Four Before Canada podcast is that women want to hear about more women. Women have always been a part of the Four Before sport or the industry, but they sometimes used to play a smaller role, often taking a role of a passenger. There's been a steady increase of female drivers over the years, and lately we've seen a huge rise in more women owning and driving their own rigs. Tell us a little bit more about the club. How did it get started? Kind of goes back to the middle of the pandemic around November 2020. So I reached out to me on Instagram. Her name's Jan. She's Jeeping with Jan. And she asked if I wanted to go for just a little Jeep cruise around Markham with her and a friend of hers. And I said, sure, why not? Sunday morning and we'll go for a drive. We hit it off and it was just nice to get out of the house when everyone was locked down. And then we had another girl called Sanaz and she reached out on Instagram. So the four of us would go for Sunday morning cruises and it just, it was just a vibe to be together when a few of us were, you know, locked down with quite a few family members at home. So it was nice for us to get out and catch a break. And a few of them were living alone. So it was nice for them to get out and be around people. So it seemed to be a win-win for for all of us. So I thought, you know, it was just a lot of fun, even though it was just the four of us. And I came home and I started the Facebook group. I thought, why not? Let's see. Maybe we'll get, you know, a couple dozen girls on here and we can do some cool stuff. And here we are, 1,600 members later. And it, it has brought us through the pandemic from being in the middle of it. And um, we made it out the other side and we created some incredible friendships along the way. 1,600 members in the basically Southern Ontario, right? Like Southern Ontario. Up until actually last week, it was just the GTA Jeep Girls Club. And we have just opened nine chapters to allow the girls in the outlying areas right. the opportunity to have meets and events in their local community because we found our meets were bringing maybe 30 Jeeps. So obviously location was an issue. Mm -hmm. So now we've got chapters in Niagara, Halton, Peel, Hamilton, Simcoe County, Dufferin County, Northumberland, and Durham. 
So they have Facebook groups as well that are private ladies only, and they'll have their own meets and events that are local to them so that they can feel what we felt when we get together. That's great. And one of the things that I know that in our conversations over the last few weeks, and even what I'm seeing on your Instagram page is the positivity and that women, you know, as we, we talked off air earlier, women can do anything men can do and probably do it better. Absolutely. So I, I, I find it very positive, right? And from my understanding, when you guys do have your meetups, it's a non-judgmental. It's Absolutely. because there's so many people that I found that going to meet with a bunch of strangers in a parking lot, <laughs> you know, even if you are an outgoing person, sometimes can be a little, a little intimidating. Intimidating. That's the word that Absolutely. I'm thinking of. Yeah. So. Maybe if we can talk a little bit about some of the thought processes behind the club in regards to bringing up positive energy. Um, about to be honest, Wes, it's a, a simple motto and it's no mean girl shit. We just will not tolerate it. We have admins and moderators who keep an eye on the page and keep an eye on the comments. And we know that debates are healthy. Yeah. Uh, but it can't come at the cost of somebody's emotional well-being or uh, any feelings being, and we just won't tolerate it. So it's simple. No mean girl shit. That's perfect. Yeah. I'll see the bumper sticker like that some days. <laughs> so Trisha, how long have you been involved with the organization? Well, I think after right when Nikki kind of made that Facebook page, I got like a pop-up on my feed and it's like GTA G Pearl's Facebook page. I hit join right away as soon as I saw it. <laughs> Finally, finally. <laughs> so I joined sure, after like in November as well, November 220 during the pandemic. Yeah. So you do basically, for lack of a better term, the meetups to an idea, right? And you also, from my understanding, you're heading out and doing some wheeling as well. What kind of events are you guys doing in regards to, you know, is it like weekly meetups? And then let's go, you know, talk about some of the four wheeling trips you guys are doing as well. Yeah. Sure, to pop this over to you. Sure. So most recently in the last, I guess, two years, we started kind of like a beginner run. So basically they're kind of like light runs for beginners who kind of want to take their Jeep on like a nice terrain trail, some water, some mud, some just to get like the basics and like educate, like kind of like wheel wheeling 101. So we do that basically once the season starts. So like in May. So maybe we would start until fall and we'll do them through the spring, through the summer. And basically whenever, you know, the girls can message me and say, hey, can we do a run? Sure, let's do a run. So places that we go is probably, you know, we try to hit somewhere more central GTA. There is like a lot of trails that we have in here, Southern North Ontario, where it's like the four points, sorry, the five points trail system. So those are kind of like level one to five trails, you know, from beginner to experience, experience, experience. So we do try to do a light trekking, but we have a lot of girls who do more trails like myself, but the trail runs are fun and getting feedback from them, the girls, like we love it. And then once they get out, they're like, we want to do more. The, the hook, you've hooked them, right? So yeah. Once you get on, you're like, yes, I want to do more. And it just, <laughs> it just begins. It begins with the modifications and begins of what do I do now? And what do you think? And you know, everyone's going to shops. And so it's definitely, you kind of feed the, the addiction starts coming along of modifications, but it's rewarding and it's fun. So yeah, well, well, their confidence too, right? They don't realize how much a stock Jeep can do and how much they can do. And Trisha is an amazing trail guide. And we also have one of our member staff who is an amazing trail guide as well. So they kind of take the girls, usually I would say 10 at a time. There's not so much waiting for each yeah. you know, part of the trail. And they, they're amazing tour guides, trail guides, sorry. It's, yeah. you know, from the education too is kind of just learning like, you know, one-on-one about airing down and gearing down and putting your Jeeps from like four high to four low. And plotting and listening and trail guide instruction, just like having fun and CB radios and going rock climbing and <laughs> just like so all that stuff. And they, and they take it all in and get to learn that. And I love that part of the education part myself. I loved like teaching. I learned that way. 
And it's just a whole nother experience. And every time I hear the word wheeling, it's my favorite word. I have to agree with you. Seeing a new person go through an obstacle that they were terrified of going through before, mm-hmm. even if it was something that experienced wheelers like myself, it's not a big deal, but we, we tend to forget that we were all starting somewhere and yeah. to see them come through and the smiles on their faces and the yes. confidence after it's just, you know, especially after a, one long day in the trail and just seeing, like I say, how they're hooked and how their confidence has grown so much that, you yeah. know, kudos to you, to you ladies for, yeah. for doing that. Cause it's, and it's not even only really a confidence builder in regards to their wheeling, but a lot of times in life and that's what this whole organization is about, right? Is Absolutely. It's also the flip side of it is a lot of us are wives, mothers, and we spend a lot of time at home doing things for other people. So this is also an opportunity for the girls to get out and do something that they love without interruption, without kids calling their names. (laughs) And it's just, you know, on that side of things too, it's just something for them to enjoy and only them in the moment. Yeah, Yeah, that's great. So let's, let's talk about some of the Jeeps we got going that you have up here. Let's for, actually first talk about your Jeeps. What, what are you driving, Nikki? I have a 2014 JKU and her name's Elsa. Elsa the white Jeep. It's so much fun. You park and you walk away and you got to turn around and look because she's property. <laughs> so I do, I have taken her on trails, but not nearly as much as Trisha has. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love it. I, I Never, ever thought that I would love driving a specific car the way I love driving my Jeep. So what brought you into the Jeep world? I had a Range Rover that died and left me on the side of the road, literally. So while I was looking for something, I was driving my husband's 2007 JKU. And I loved it, but it was a bit of a bone shaker. So I thought, let me maybe test drive something a little bit newer. And as soon as I went to see it, that was it. I was sold and I've never looked. (laughs) Game over. It was game over. And what about you, Trisha? What are you driving? So I drive a 2018 JL. It's red and fantastic and beautiful (laughs) and basically my third baby. And yeah, she's modified and she goes rock climbing and mudding and everything in between. (laughs) What's her name? Her name is a Red Beast. Red Beast uh, underscore JL on Instagram. You can go check out some videos there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely with Freud in the show notes for sure. You did mention that it's modified. What do you have in there for mods? She is lifted. So she has 2.5 right now, but I'm going to be going higher than that. This year, 35 Monturi lad tires, but I love them. So, and what else is there? She has packed with recovery gear. And what do I sport also? My newly switched over to a soft top this year which is new for me it's from the hard top. So she has a nice Trek top with high lift at the back and she looks cute. Red rims. She does have red rims. Yes, I do wheel the, oh, red, yeah. I do wheel the red rims, but they're bruised, but I'm, they're, they're proud bruises. Of yeah. Healing, so yeah. Battle scars that you can, you're proud to show off, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> so it lo- looks like to me, most of the Jeeps in the GTA Jeep Girls group are Wranglers but I know you accept anything like Cherokees or whichever. Are most of the Wranglers in the club four doors or is there a lot of two doors as well? I would say a majority of them are four doors and it maybe go on a maybe 80-20 split. Yeah. Hey, Trisha, about an 80-20 split. We do have a number of trail hawks as well, Cherokees yeah. that we've taken with us on the trails as well. They're trail rated, so... Happy to have them join us. And that makes for some awesome content too, to see a little change from Wranglers all the time. No doubt. Yeah. I think going to the four door was probably one of the best moves Jeep made in the last 20 years. Yeah. It just seemed to revitalize the brand. And because a lot of us have families and it really opened it up to people with families buying these vehicles and and going out. So I think it's definitely one of the best moves that they made in years. Do you guys have any older vehicles in your group? We do. We have one really special member with 2000 TJ. Nice. Uh, his name is Bruiser. And that is TJ. And when she's running, she is badass. She <laughs> takes on those trails like she's, you know, <laughs> like she's a 2023. Really, really nice Jeep. We love having her out on the trail. And like, again, all ages of members and all ages of Jeeps. So we cover it all. That's one of the things I also wanted to talk about is 
your group is very inclusive in regards to not only age, but also race, because that's not always been something that has been, how do I word this properly without sounding like an asshole? It's not something that, you know, that has been a lot of different cultures in the Canadian full drive industry. Now, I remember when I used to be at National Full Drive in Burlington, I was a sales manager there for a number of years before they came for real parts and then onto the new company. But even back then, you know, we're talking years ago, 15 years ago, and it was a very white male sport. And uh, it, it's been really neat. I think in the last 10 years, we've seen a huge increase in women of all ages, mm -hmm. but also other cultures coming in. And I think that's been really neat to see the whole full drive industry being a very inviting to that. And I think part of that is probably because Toronto is a multicultural city and you don't see as much of that and say as, as Edmonton, but that's one thing I did notice looking through your photos that any woman is invited. So no matter the age, no matter the race, no matter the religion, whatever it is. And that is absolutely awesome of what of you. Thank you. It just shows that as women, we are very empowering and very supportive. And not only when, you know, we have our group chats or we have our conversations in person, but we focus on Jeeps. We talk about real, real shit. We talk about life struggles. We talk about work. We talk about families. We talk about whatever, you know, anybody else needs support with. Uh, we're there and that's just, that's what women do. So. We're proud of all our members and it's just nice to have so much support on keeping levels and all other levels. Life, just life. What Some of my best friends are people that I met on the trail and I'm sure it affects with you as well too, yeah. right? So you meet a certain person on the trail and you're out and you just form that instant bond or connection. And then all of a sudden, like you say, you're talking about life and then you've got each other's foot phones and you're texting or calling all the time and I, and for sure but, inviting them to her wedding yes to her wedding. <laughs> yeah so is the wedding going to have a lot of jeeps in it yeah the wedding happened in the summer and there was a there was a parking lot full of jeeps yeah <laughs> so they were <laughs> was there photos photos with your red jeep and the there white was dress? photos there yeah there was photos <laughs> yeah girls got photos i told them to come in yeah it was <laughs> that is awesome that's great <laughs> I know you, you have your meetups quite often and stuff like that, but do you guys have any big events happening this summer or this spring or like any camping events or? We have our annual beach day event, but we're going to have to put a little spin on that because the city of Port Colburn and Nickel Beach has now banned beachfront parking. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to, uh, Trisha and I are going to have to look at a new location, but we do like to have a beach day event where we can park um, yeah. beachfront and it's just an amazing day. So we have that, and then uh, we're hoping to represent at the Overland event in the summer. So, yeah, with Overland North. Yeah, Overland North. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're they're a great bunch of people. We had them on, I don't know, a month ago or something like that, cool. and okay. it was a really really interesting interview with the two of the organizers, and they reminded me when I was looking through your your posts and also talking to you. They reminded me a lot of. In regards to that, they love everybody. So it's patience with them, and it just sounds like an incredible event. So we posted it in the Simcoe Co County chapter as well. So I, uh, there's already some chatter about doing a call heading nice. over. So hopefully we can represent and support them. Yeah, yeah. Back in January, I was talking to it was Christian and Luke I was talking to, and yeah. one of the big discussions or takeaways was that how they always try to make their events inviting to everybody from beginners to the experienced yeah. weavers and the overlanders and like she's very similar what you guys do. So I know they'd love to see some of your members show up and it'd be nice to have a bunch of Jeeps to offset all the Toyotas. <laughs> it would be, yes. Yeah, I'm really hoping to get there. The, on, your, on your website at gtajeepgirls.com, you have some pretty neat merchandise. There's the typical branded hoodies and t-shirts. <laughs> What caught my eyes and dog sweaters and the tote bags. <laughs> yeah, you like those? That was, that was interesting. It's something I never thought of, right? So. Dog bags and tote bags. Yeah. A lot of, uh, yeah. 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 And <laughs> hats and the shirts and. All kinds. Yeah. So definitely if you, if you do want to support the GTA Jeep girls, even if you're not 
in the GTA. Check it out, gtagpgrowth.com. They got some pretty cool merchandise there. And a portion of your proceeds goes to the Help Pause. Can you tell us more about that and why you chose? I think it was a few meets in when we first started and it became very apparent very quickly that a lot of us own dogs, myself and Trisha included. So I think something that we would all love in a realistic world would be to just save all the animals that are ever experience abuse or neglect, you know, bring them all home with us. And since we can't do that, that is something that they do. They rescue neglected and abused animals in St. Lucia. They nurse them back to health and they adopt them out to families in North America and Europe. So we just want to support their effort, you know, since it's something that we wish we could do, we support the ones that can. Mm-hmm. Definitely a great cause for sure. Hopping back into events, the Toronto Sportsman Show is coming up next week, March 16th and 19th but you're not sure if you knew about it, but there's going to be some really cool vendors there. Of course, the Overland North guys are going to be there. So it'll be a good chance if anybody in the GTA is going to this to talk to the Overland North guys, but also Ian from Afraid Not Ropes will be there and he does recovery gear made right in Ontario. Even the rope itself is, is made there. And Ian's a super nice guy. We've had him on the, on the podcast as well. And uh, yeah, I know his room. Sorry? <laughs> I said, I know his room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's uh, good quality stuff. He's did a really good job. He's really stepping it up this year, shooting a lot more events. And, and his product is, you know, I've seen some friends of mine bought it out in BC and that. So it's starting to spread. So really good guy. Sky Tent is going to be there as well. He oh, was on. Had my eye on that. that I'm, well, he'll have one there and he'll have it opened up so you can oh, crawl into it. And, amazing equipment. Yeah. 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 He, he was on, oh, a couple months ago. But right across the aisle, look at the map earlier today and uh, right across the aisle is Mike at Red Bear Outdoor, which is a fairly popular overlanding store in, in Toronto. And, and he's coming on in a couple of weeks, Mike is, mm-hmm. but uh, he's going to be at, at the uh, Toronto Sportsman Show too as well. So, oh, but yes, yeah, so anybody listening, March 16th and 19th at the International Center, there's going to be some really cool vendors. It's usually a good show. I remember going there when I was living in Toronto and mm-hmm. it's just a good time to hang out. They're, they're starting to see a lot more of the overlanding crowd there. Like action is going to be there as well. And a few other places, but check it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It should be, it should be a good fun show. So the overland North guys, I think really going to their events. I think a lot of your members have really like those. Yeah. It's, and they're this year, they're going to be doing a thing that is. They're going to be doing day passes too. Oh, so okay. because it is a, a, like a two or three day event, yeah. you can just buy a day pass this year and go just for the day. If you have to work on the other days or whatever. Oh, no. Yeah. So but it's a good event. Bring the kids up and, and have fun uh-huh. and dates or not. <laughs> exactly. And there's always, you know, good door prizes and, and fun times. Oh, yeah. So they, they do a great event. <laughs> so if people that are listening, if they want to learn more about the GTA Jeep girls or even women in the four wheel drive, how do they get a hold of you guys? What's the easiest ways? The easiest way would be to DM us on Instagram, GTA Jeep girls on Instagram, or they can email at GTA Jeep girls at Yahoo.com, DM on, on Facebook. But again, that will just be members who have joined the group again. They have to answer questions and we check profiles to make sure that we know who we're letting into the group. No locked profiles, no men, sorry, not sorry. So we're very careful who we let into the group because that's where we create the events. So we don't post about events until after they've happened. And that's all we can make sure that they're ladies only and that we're comfortable with who's attending. Yeah, ladies and dogs, (laughs) ladies, dogs, and Jeeps. (laughs) Perfect combination. (laughs) Correct. So obviously if somebody is not in the GTA. And you've mentioned that. What were the towns you guys started up new branches again? So the the nine new chapters are Niagara, Halton, Hamilton, Dufferin County, Simcoe County, Northumberland, Durham, Peel, and Tri City. Tri City, which is where, where where's the Tri City one then? Tri City is Kitchener Waterloo Well. Okay. Right. Yeah. So that's, so that's the nine new chapters. So 
They can follow all of us on Instagram, but if they're in any of those areas, I recommend finding their private group on Facebook and joining, and then they can get in on the events in their area. Right, right. When you ladies in the, in the Toronto area are heading out wheeling, you can also head north up towards Barrie and stuff like that? or So when, when we do our beginner runs, we head up to Oshawa. Um, okay. So it's a little yep. bit like an hour drive from GTA, which... You know, we get a lot of girls lining up. So sometimes we actually have to do multiple runs a day. And we've done two runs or, you know, three runs a day. It's been into groups. So that's more local, which is good yep. for the beginning trails. You know, there's other trails. There's like up in North, I've wheeled in North Bay, out in Hold in the Boonies. And I've wheeled <laughs> also in Minden area. So, you know, you have like Bob Cajun, Minden, and those areas where there's tons of trails, ATV, Jeeps, run those trails up there. So that's mostly where most of the clubs go. Most of the groups go yeah. to be up there, yeah. Yeah, some great wheeling up there. Mm-hmm. My introduction to that area was when they used to have a Jeep Jamboree like mm, years yes, ago. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, we had the Jeep Jamboree up there. So yeah. if somebody was to, just, just somebody new to the Jeep world per se, and they want to sort of dip their toe into actually going off road and a lot of people, men included, haven't even shifted their Jeeps into four-wheel drive or, you know, less of them have into a low range. And they want to kind of dip their toes and see what this is all about. What recommendations would you have in regards to getting gear-wise? I mean, obviously you want them to, you know, meet up with you guys and you can talk to them in person and mm-hmm. and through Instagram and, and Facebook mm-hmm. and such, but... If anybody's looking to, you know, sort of dip the toes and what kind of basic gear would you recommend for them? Basic gear, like mostly the most important thing probably is like if you're going to do any kind of wheeling is <clears throat> airing down. So my first thing I bought myself was also is, you know, a, a, a tire inflator and tire decompressor. Probably most important, you want to air down fast, you want to air up fast. <laughs> yeah, That's, yeah. you know, that's probably number one thing. Radio. So... You know, our trail ones, we usually use walkie-talkies. It's just easier so people don't have to do like a full CB setup radio. Right. Uh, but I recommend, you know, CB radio could contact with your group. And on the other recovery wheel, your, I personally like to have like anything happens with your wheeling on your wheels, right? You want to make sure that you have your hijack, which I love. I've used it multiple times, helping other groups as well. Just, you know, you know, feed locks go, your tires go flat. You hit, a t- you hit a rock, you're like, oh, shoot, there it goes. <laughs> there it goes the tire. So, yep. you know, that's important. Your max tracks are getting tracks. So you're getting yourself out of the mud. I personally love, and a lot of girls have, is a winch. A lot of girls have their winches. And, yeah. you know, that's probably my favorite thing to use. It's nice and easy. You know, learning how to use it and work with it is also like a learning experience itself. That's just as important as the winch that's itself is learning how to use it safely. Safely, right. exactly. so, Yeah. So that takes, you know, some time and, you know, what else? I have toe straps. So straps can come easy if you don't have a winch. You know, that could help yeah. snatch. So those are kind of like your basics that you would want to have in a recovery kit. And so you can go online. You can, there are some, you know, good companies that have um, recover kits already made so you can get like a nice pre-made bag have all your ropes your snatch blocks any kind of like gloves any kind of recovery gear is nice kit and then you can store it right in your jeep in the back and it's it's from afraid dot ropes is a perfect example of that right yeah he's got a he's got a bag and he's got kits he can put together for you for sure and there's lots of other options online but being canadian made is important to buy selves as well so one of the other things is Probably a good or a first aid kit. First aid, um, I have two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and first aid kit for sure. For, yeah, sure, for sure. I did a podcast episode with Ken mm-hmm. from wildmedkits.ca. He's in he's Ontario as well. Mm-hmm. But one thing I learned, I, I'm not a pet owner, but even mm-hmm. have a little first aid kit. They have first aid kits for pets, which I never thought mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. And uh, so yeah. I just always thought I would just you know, use my own first aid kit if I need to, right? But there's differences and you know, he's talking to vets about what to do and that. But yeah, that's something that never crossed my mind, not being a, a pet owner. And now, you mentioned that both of your Jeeps have names. Is that a common thing with the female crowd? Because I personally have, I, I never really named my vehicles until I got into some relationships. They're like, what's the name of your vehicle? And I'm like, 
I've never thought about it. So named any of my previous people, <laughs> but it just it just enhances the relationship you have with your Jeep. Yep. Uh, it, and it really is a relationship. It sounds so insane to say, but it just gives them an identity. You put so much time and money into these Jeeps that it just, you've got a, it's a lovely relationship, I got to say. Yeah. You know, it's just, uh, yeah, I never named another. So I just, I went, I went with the flow. Everybody, everybody seemed to have a name and it just, just works. It works. Yeah. yeah. My ex's daughter, when we first started dating, was five or so at the time. And she's like, what's the name of your Jeep? And I'm like, I don't have a name. She's like, call it Dora. Dora. Why? And she's like, because you like to go exploring. And I'm like, I'm not going to name my big, tough, strong Jeep. I'm not going to name it. But the, the name Dora stuck. So. <laughs> oh, I love it. Love it. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. One of those things. So but I never really named my vehicles much before. So I, For me personally, I think coming into the Jeep community, I found a lot of people ended up naming their Jeeps. It was just something that it kind of happened. Like they named like, you know, yours, like Dora. That's like Dora Explorer. They kind of went with like, okay, I take my Jeep on a trail. I'm going to, it kind of goes with this or, yeah. you know, more of like a pay it prince is going to name it this or, and I just, it's be, just being part of the Jeep McKinney. I kind of saw like, oh, a lot of people named their, naming their Jeeps. I'm, I'm going to name my Jeep. <laughs> and I'm like, I, love I, it. I think it's great. I definitely help with that relationship. You know, yeah. there's other names that I've called it at certain times, yeah. but you know, for reasons when I was working on it and get pissed off, right? There's other names, right? But I, I think it definitely helps, you know, that little relationship. The Jeep world is a interesting world. There's no real other world like it in regards to the Jeep wave and the ducks. What, what's up with the ducks thing? Maybe you can explain that to me. <laughs> the duck thing was actually started by a girl called Alice in Parliament. If you Google her, you'll see her pretty cool story on how that all started. But really, it's just about spreading the love and, you know, bringing a smile to people's faces. Again, during the pandemic, when everybody was just yeah. out in such a funk. So to walk out of work or out of a store or when you've had a bad day and you see a duck and somebody actually took the time park their vehicle get out and put a duck on your jeep it just it just literally i'm i personally i'm waiting for a spontaneous duck you yeah. have a spontaneous duck yet but i can imagine you know from all the comments and all the posts that we see that it's just a really a nice way to, to make someone smile yeah yeah i agree 100 percent. i think it's a neat idea at first <laughs> i was like the hell is this right but like you mentioned, all the polls seem quite positive about it. Yeah. It just builds up that whole Jeep community. Absolutely. Like you say, you got the Jeep wave and now I got the ducks and it just. And now you the, got the, girls. And now you got girls. Exactly. Right. So the whole Jeep world is a different duck in itself. <laughs> right. But so there's no other, I don't think there's any other family like it. And that's what, you know, a lot of. Really explain it. You just have to experience it. Yeah. And I think, you know, Trisha, you'll agree that it, until you're in the Jeep world, you just cannot believe, you know, the sense of community. It's just, it's pretty, pretty cool. It's overwhelming sometimes. And you're just mm -hmm. like, oh, this is like happening. Like you meet so many people and it's just mm -hmm. a whole different level of like friendships. And it's just, yeah, like Nikki said, it's just, it's, um, it's amazing. Yeah. The whole community is amazing. Yeah. People that you haven't even met and you're like, hey. <laughs> I seen your Jeep. Hey, I seen your Instagram account. And you just talk to each other and you're like, I don't know you, but you're so cool. I'm like, you just kind of bond over like, you know, Jeep. It's people are like, oh, this thing, like, you're crazy. You like, like Jeeps as much. I'm like, yeah, I do like Jeeps as much. Thank you very much. But it's just, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Even simple things like running into somebody at Home Depot, you see a Jeep and you're like, hey, nice Jeep. And then you end up sitting there talking for 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. And then you walk away. And it's like, I don't even know that person's name or we just met kind of idea, right? And it's like, yeah. you know, I, I can remember doing that a few times with, with the Jeeps and, you know, whoever is with would say, who's that? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and she's like, 
you guys seem like best friends. I'm like, oh, we just met. I got an idea, right? Yeah, I mean, even when you're going somewhere and you're parking, you can have a really good parking spot that you see, but if there's a Jeep and it's, you know, lean further away from the door, <laughs> you can beside it. Especially if yours looks better. Absolutely. And so if anybody wants to, that's not in the GTA area and is looking for some assistance with starting up a Jeep Girls club in their area, say Edmonton or Calgary or Montreal or whatever, uh, they can definitely get a hold of you at GTA Jeep Girls for some advice. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We'll reach out anytime and, you know, have spoken to presidents of Jeep clubs, of girl Jeep clubs in the States. There's a number of mm -hmm. them. I am going to shout out to Jeep Girl Mafia. Uh, they've got chapters all over the States. And Nicole is the president of Jeep Girl Mafia, and she's given me some great uh, words of wisdom. So yeah, anybody can reach out if they're looking to start and do the same thing in their area and I'd be happy to happy to help. That's great. That's great ideas. So the last question I ask every guest is what Canadian would you like to listen to on the 4 Before Canada podcast? For me, my favorite two JTs, my gladiators, the Mojaves, Mojester on Instagram. He's always like showing me some love. He's always tagging me. He's such a nice guy. And he's like reached out to me and, and um, Arctic Mojev also. They're both Canadian. Take amazing, amazing photography of their Jeeps and just sceneries with their Jeeps and their Jeeps on the trails. And you just have to check out their Instagram accounts. They've recently paired up together. So they've been you know hitting the trails and doing photo shoots together but two very nice guys love to see them love to hear about their story as well you know they recently joined the G community as well too with the jts the gladiators so yeah i'd love to hear from them definitely I'll look them up i don't think i've come across them yet so th th that's one thing the whole canadian four-wheel drive world is mm -hmm. like i've been involved in it since i was a kid and i've been involved on it from a from a over for shop side of it pretty much across the country and in the racing as well across the country but there's so many people that i've met through this podcast that i didn't know not sure i shouldn't say they didn't know they existed but it's just growing so much and i think the pandemic had a lot to do with that but there's so many people out there enjoying their four by fours and i'm just hearing about more and more people every day and hearing their stories every day it's really really interesting their accounts are amazing. I follow them as well. And it just, some of the, the photography, it's really pretty cool. I'm going to give two girls a shout out. Two really, really cool Canadian girls that I think would be really neat to have on your show. The first one is Tasha from Ottawa. Her Instagram is just the Jeep girl. And she is an off-roading queen. Doors off, mud everywhere, dog in the back with his glasses on. And she's just, she's amazing. And she came down to Toronto just over a year ago. So I had the chance to meet her. Super sweet girl. But her Instagram as well is just full of off-roading. Doesn't matter the weather, if it's raining, if it's snowing. So she's really, really cool girl. And also, I really love Jeeping in Teal. Marie is from Quebec. And again, like I said, the photography her shots, her angles. She teaches all, teaches, you know, us a thing or two about, about the angles and the lighting. And she's got two teal Jeeps too. So her content is just, I'd love to see it. So she would be one of my picks to be on your show as well. Yeah, I do follow her as well. Okay. And you're right. She's got some great photography and it's not always the same stuff. No. She's changing it up a little Absolutely, bit, right? There's, yeah. there's certain people that it's always the same poser shot or whatever, right? Thanks. But she's, she mixes it up quite well. And she loves. Yeah. yeah. And love, I love to follow her account. Yeah. yeah. Definitely want to get a hold of those people for sure. Definitely some great suggestions. So once again, we're talking to Nikki and Trisha from GTA Jeep Girls. Instagram is the best bet. GTA Jeep Girls on Instagram, GTA Jeep Girls .com. Follow them up. And if you're in the GTA area or Sullivan, Ontario, follow them and maybe you can show up for a meetup and then go from there. I th really thank you ladies for taking the time to chat with me today. It, thank you. Uh, it's been thank fun. You. And I should mention, we talked about it off air. Today is International Women's Day. And so happy International Women's Day. Thanks. The podcast obviously will come out on a different day, but it's just I ironic that we booked it for this, yeah. for this day. Really had a good chat and it was, it was a good time. And 
hopefully when I get out to Toronto again for visit, we can meet up for a coffee or a beer and go from there. Thanks for having us, Wes. Thank you. Not a problem. And once again, to our listeners, if you did enjoy the show and you do get some good takeaway from the Foot Before Canada podcast, if you can rate the show on your favorite podcast app, it really helps the exposure and we can get more reviews. Usually means a lot of times more guests like Nikki and Trisha, and it just helps that exposure all across the board for organizations like the GTA Jeep Girls. So please, uh, to our listeners, if you guys can rate us, we really appreciate it. And after that, thank you very much.